you make yourself a bit vulnerable because you need to score a goal to stay in the game and holes start to appear in, 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 in the defense. And um, yeah, and that's exactly what happens, you know. Um, we The boys tried, I think they tried, I can't blame them for effort, you know, but sometimes effort doesn't really win your football matches. And I think it was just the quality of, of their team and the experience that they had, you know, they knew what to do in the right moments, whereas for us, every time we build up and get ourselves in a decent position, we, we tend to give the ball away. And, and, um, and yeah, that becomes difficult, you know, if you want to get back into the game, score goals. But the final pass in, in, in the final third is it's a big factor and it was lacking today. So, And then we go concede a soft goal where I think we were kind of covered from the cross, us winning it. And you see two players go for the same, for the same Raja player and leaves one player right in the center of the goal free and they get the second goal. And then, you know, there's really no coming back from that. So yeah, it's a, it's a pity and it's a shame because I think we were very decent at home. The previous two games and today was just a completely different story. Um, I don't know, nerves, the occasion may be too big for us. And that's so, yeah, there's not really much I can say about the performance and that, but it is what it is. I have to commend the players for trying. They, 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 gave it, they gave it everything, but the opposition, the quality that they have in the team, the depth was just far bigger than us. And we weren't able to get ourselves back into the game, get ourselves a goal, and then maybe making, making a contest of the game. And that's how the cookie crumbled. So we also didn't create as many chances as, you know, as, as you would think how our last two matches panned out where we won and we created so many chances against our position and you don't score them. And today we, we, couldn't, break, we couldn't break them down. And when you can't do that and you allow the opposition to to get in behind and score goals, then yeah, it's a long, very long day and, and, and the result at the end of the day, end of 90 minutes are going to be in favour of the opposition and that's what it was today. So, you know, tough luck and you take it on the chin and you give yourself this extreme amount to climb. Now you kind of rely on other games, other results, hoping that <clears throat> that the results favor you in the next game that's about to kick off or that's kicked off already against Arroyo and Satif, but not how, how we wanted it to be. And um, yeah, that's it really. I think we gave ourselves a mountain to climb. Um, it's very difficult now, and especially with the fact that you saw 
Oroya's last match at home against Raja. They beat them, so they are also a difficult team to go away to and, 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 and go and win a game. But I think we have to be positive. We, we can't be like we go into a funeral. You know, we have to be upbeat about the situation. And Raja came here and, and, and they had a fantastic game and then they got the result that they wanted. They scored two goals. Uh, maybe we can do exactly the same as well, but that, that, that's going to be very difficult now. So, so yeah, it's not an ideal situation for for me and the team. We, we want to rely on other people. We like to have our faith in our own hands. You know, it's about working hard, taking opportunities. And today we, we certainly didn't do that. And the better team won. So, you know, we now, we're in a really sticky situation, but like I said, one game to go, anything is possible. I think the boys, if they come together um, and they really want to continue in this competition very badly, then they got to really go out there, show bravery, they got to show heart, they got to show character to go away from, from home to try and overturn, you know, uh, one match to get a win and then hopefully... Um, the match against Raja and Satif as a positive outcome for, 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 for us. Um, so, yeah, so now it's just hoping and praying that everywhere else the results work in our favor and that we can go away from home to Haroya and, and get a result. And that's what it all pans down to, but it's a it's, it's difficult, very difficult situation that we've left ourselves in now. Sorry? No, obviously it's, it's never it's never ideal when you have to make a substitute in the first half of the match, you know, and especially when it's forced because um, we we would we thought um, having a false nine, you know, could help us drag their central defenders out, and then we can use the space in at the back for the likes of um, Memela and Kalinga. To, to run into there with the pace that they have because um, the central defenders are um, they're very strong and physical in the dual battles but I think in behind for pace they, they lack a bit and we we had um, we had pace in abundance you know and then obviously with Mulenga now going off which kind of defeat the purpose where we wanted to get in behind them and now we have to bring in a, 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 a regular number nine that compete physicality, which all credit to he came in and he did a wonderful job. But, you know, it just became a bit into their hands. The game plan fell into their hands because now they were competing and they were fighting against physicality and, and we couldn't get in really behind them. So... So yeah, which made it a bit difficult for us having to change so early in the game. But you know, nevertheless, the change didn't really do that much because they still managed to score the all important goals, and you know, we didn't. So yeah, so. <laughs> Good evening. <laughs> Very good. Um, yeah, no, that just has a massive implication in in the way forward because obviously. We definitely didn't have the best of seasons, you know. Um, 
from the from the off from the, the preseason, it just didn't start the way you wanted it to start, and especially the recruitment department, that the players that you wanted to bring in, that didn't happen. So of course, you know, you you kind of hoping that the same team that that you produced finishing second in the league, the desire, um, the desire was to still be there. Um, even though there wasn't players coming in and challenging them for places in the team. So, you know, that comfortable. Um, so, yeah, so when you start like that, then you know it's, go it's, it's, it's not going to be a very easy, se um, easy season. And, um, yeah, so for me, it's been uh, mediocre, mediocre from what, what you thought you could build on from, you know, the season we just finished with and um, in the position that we did. So, yeah, so it didn't, it uh, 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 kind of disrupted the plans. And this loss would have, this loss just added massive pressure and, and massive, um, I'm looking for a specific word, but I can't seem to find it. Uh, yeah, I just, adds enormous pressure now because this was kind of now the last game becomes extremely important that you have to win or you're out of the cup champions and in the league form we are dwindling there and, and just inside the top eight area and psychologically for the players it might just be one hurdle too too many that we might not have the fight or, you know, but I'm hoping that they, they are mature and they're good professionals and, and they love the job that they do and they must be privileged that they are part of this team, that they would go out there and fight every single match from now until the end of the season, you know, to turn things around because with seven games to go, you can still achieve, you know, um, something special top four finish could still be possible, but it all comes down to the desire and, and, and the mentality now of the players. And um, this is a time where we're going to be tested because of course of not having the best season and everybody's expected after we finish second that Amazulu will be up there and we found it difficult competing both in the CAF and in the league. Now the players have to, have to really show the character, they have to show, you know, the mental toughness. And um, and that's what we as coaches, you hope that they can find it, they can find it somewhere within them that we can go because we are good enough to compete and win all seven games, remaining games. But me saying it and them doing it is two completely different things. Yes, of course you would be concerned because if you look at us compare besides today, um, we've created numerous chances against Raja. The first match, we could have had two goals to the goods and we ended up with zero. Against Oroya, I think we could have won easily three or four. No, we only won one, no. And all the missed chances that we had, you know, to kill the game. And then against Setif at home, same thing. You know, you, you see the amount of chances we created and it was clear-cut goal-scoring chances just to put the ball on target and then it's a goal and you don't get that and you only win by 1-0. No. And Satif away from home, three glorious chances that we also had and you don't hit the target. Yeah, then it becomes it becomes difficult. And now your, your, your home game, um, zero goals. So psychologically, it is difficult. It's difficult for the players. But like I said, you know, you have to be mature about it. And... We just have to, we just, they just have to keep 
keep playing the way we are, keep fighting, and then hopefully that by a stroke of luck, you know, the ball get, goes in the net and it changes the player's fortune and then goals will start coming. But yeah, it is difficult and it is worrying that we've not scored as many goals as we would have liked to. So... Um, I think yeah, they are very they are very experienced team. Um, they've got good quality. Um, well, very well organized as well. So I can't see why not why they can't have you know um successful run against these teams. Um, um they clearly. And also, they know where the net, they where they know where the goals are. They they score goals. They're a team that don't struggle to score goals. So yeah, I think they could fancy their chances. You know, this group is in a slouch group, and I think um, the teams in this group, if they progress, they can compete against against teams in the other group. But it, it only gets tougher from here. Once you once you get out the group stages, that's when. You're gonna you're gonna come across the, the the real McCoys, all the big boys, you know, in 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 the respective countries. So those are the challenges. But I think yeah, um, teams that progress from this group, they've got what it takes to go and compete, and they can they can certainly do that. And I think yeah, Raja has every every chance has that Alahli, um, Esperance. Sundowns have so yeah so they've got good quality and um, we stood our ground but you could see just the level they were just a little bit a level above us because of the experience and the seasoned campaigners in this CAF Champions League and we it's first time so it was it was tough but we definitely gave it a good go. Alex, Listen, I think I would say just having any fan besides the directors, people that you see in the club all the time, just the fact that the mere fact that we had some people who were able to come to the game, that was motivational enough, you know, so we're extremely grateful and we're so happy for them that they were able to, to come because it's been, I think, since 2020, the fans have not been present. And that's all, that's two years, you know, not being able to go and watch a, a live match of football. So, so yes, the, the little bit, you know, it's better than having no fans. Um, so 
I don't think I don't think if we had a full stadium, it could have, it would have made any difference. I think the opposition, the quality, the quality that the opposition showed today, that showed why they've won this competition four times in the past. You know, and and for us, this is the first experience. Um, and a really good one, and it's a lot of lessons that myself, as a new, as a young coach, learned playing up against these kind of teams, and um, and uh, definitely, I definitely think the way we performed and they performed, they just took their game to a whole different level, and we weren't able to do so. And um, so, having a full stadium would maybe not have changed. The result, I don't know. That you have to ask the, the players individually if maybe having fans here affected them because you became so accustomed to playing in front of empty stadiums and you like hearing your own voice echoing off the, off the pitch. So now having people cheer for you. So maybe it was a factor also where nerves and that kicked in playing in front of people again today. But you can't, be, I don't want to take anything away from the opposition because they were they were solid, they were good. They showed their class today and they were just better than us on the day. So fans or no fans would not have helped. And then your second question was again? No, 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 that one that you asked. Oh, no, I mean, listen, me, I, I, enjoy, I enjoy the challenge. I enjoy the challenge and it's been such a such a learning experience, but it's it's it's, it's brilliant for upcoming young coaches that we're able to so so soon in our coaching career you have this opportunity to compete against teams who've, who've played in this competition for many years that's won it a few times. So for you to test yourself and learn and gain experience from this situation. So yeah, I would not change it for the world. And if if it's up to me, I would take it year after year after year. But unfortunately, the way our season is going, it definitely ain't coming next season. So so I don't really have a choice. Um, um I have to conf confirm with just playing domestic football next season, which wasn't part of the plan, because once you get a taste of this high-level football. So many medias. If you play local game, one, two, three, you know. So uh, this is great, you know. So I want to, I want to experience and achieve having this all the time and learning from top clubs, top coaches. When you go, when you go away from home, you see the facilities where where other teams in 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 Africa are in terms of development, having training facilities, having their own facilities and, and where we are at the moment. So that's always that's always encouraging and that's something to take from learning from there and hoping that our teams can also take a leap from their books and 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 add it implement into ours, you know. So I wouldn't change this for the world, but unfortunately it doesn't look like we'll be finishing second or Getting Champions League football again anytime soon. How honest must I be? <laughs> Too much honesty will probably get me fired. Um, now, nah, listen. I think. I think. You know. I'm. I'm. I can't wish for too much because I think when I joined the team, these players they gave everything. You know, and they over exceeded the expectations, what they were capable of from, from 13 in the league when I joined to finishing second. That was, I think no team has done that 
in the PSL era, you know? So that was an achievement in itself, you know? But then if you want to keep, if you want to keep that mentality, if you want to keep that momentum going, you have to add, you have to bring in a couple of new players to provide challenge for the guys because you don't want players to get comfortable because as a footballer, it's very easy to get comfortable. If I don't have challenges, if I'm playing, all I know I need to work hard in training to get myself into the starting 11. But there's not really challenges, anyone challenging me. So whether I have a mediocre game, an okay game, the best game, I'm playing the next match as well. So, you know, you, you get performances that goes up and down. But when there's no one challenging you, no one pushing you for that for that spot, complacency kicks in, and that's part and parcel of the that's the DNA of of human beings. You know, if you're in this situation, because I know I've been a player myself, and if I know if I have a bad game, the coach changed me. The next player he scores two goals, I'm sitting on the bench for the next three, four, five games, and I don't want that. So I'm gonna always make sure that I'm on my toes that I'm always playing the best game that I possibly can because the week that I that I give during training session will make sure that it will keep me in the team because my performances on match day shows that I, I deserve to play. So he needs to wait his chance until I'm COVID, until I catch COVID or I'm sick or I'm ill or I'm injured for for anybody to, to, to take me out the team, you know? But when you don't have that, it becomes very comfortable. And, and, and that's the situation. We, we just became comfortable with, with what we've achieved last season. And because there's not been much challenges coming in. So yeah, if, if we win, if we win games, brilliant. And if the opposition sometimes is a bit tough character, we don't have, we don't have enough where we, where we dig deep and that we that we fight the same way as we fight last season then now and, and, and that's the situation that you face with and you have to deal with it you you have to try and turn it around but unfortunately at the end of the day once the once the players step over that white line there's absolutely no tactics and no nothing that a coach can say to make players give you 150 percent every game you know to make sure that they show that same desire where they want to win anymore. And, and that's been that's been the story of our season this time. And like I said, our depth wasn't wasn't good enough where we can go and compete, you know. And 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 that's that's not the players' fault. Not the players for mm-hmm. players can't be fault for that, you know. The club on the whole has to look at the way the policy, the way we recruit. Um, how we bring in players and that because, yeah, if you win promotion, example, so that you can understand my my views on when you win promotion from NFD to PSL, you want to show loyalty to the players that got you promoted. You don't add. You think that team is going to be ready and good enough to play compete against Premier League? They'll be the, 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 the pundits, they'll be the bookies' favorite team to go down automatically because they are custom. They know championship or NFT and play PSL level is completely different. Can that player step up? Some teams, some teams are fortunate enough that you can, but some can't. So when you bring in new players, not saying that you have to discard the players that got you there, but and football is not an emotional game. It's a game of survival. If you want to survive, if you want to compete, if you want to, to challenge, you have to bring in quality players that can take your team to the next level. You can't just stick to the same and think that they're going to make that push automatically, you know? And now that's been the story of our season. So, you know, we're grateful we're not second or third from bottom. We're still in the top eight. So. That's a that's an achievement for the players for the team itself. Coach, still looking at that question, trying to understand specifically what's strategy and coach. So is there anything in the culture 
Um, I, I think my the team is you know it's a lot of lot of matches, a lot of traveling. Sometimes get in you know we we rotate, we rotate and and it's not you're not always going to get the best performance. You know you get you come up against teams who's firing from all cylinders and you know they get one opportunity they take them, and you don't take your chances. You, you lose by 1-0, and then people look for players not performing and that. So it's it's not a question of having to bolster. It's just a question of it's been a really long and tough and hard season for for, for, for our team, you know, with the cha- with Champions League challenges that we're up against as well. So, so, yeah, listen, we've... I can't ask any more of these guys. They give me everything... They come to training every single day and, and you see the quality. They work exceptionally hard, but there's nothing you can do on the, on the end of the day when the opposition has just a bit more quality or, or more um, conviction than what you have on the day of the match. And, you know, you got to take it and you got to just work on things and work on things until you get it right. But you can't now say because we've, Considered, or we've lost the game now. It's the central pairs are maybe not good enough, and they bolstered last season. They were exceptional, but you know. So looking at the expenditure uh, in team medical defensive 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 looking at your the profile is in the player of the they can't score compared to the I think it's a mental thing. It's a mental thing because I think I'm I'm someone who went to Europe and I didn't want to play one season or two seasons. I wanted to complete. I wanted to finish my career in Europe because I think that was the best for me and for my family and for what I want to achieve out of life and what I want to achieve. So I had to, I knew every year I have to get better because I'll be out the door. And I did it for 15 years, you know, because I wanted it. And that is what players have to do. To stay at the top, you can't just settle for, hey, I did well last season and that will be enough to keep me there. No. Every year, there's youngsters coming in, there's new challenges, and you've got to rise with the occasion. You've got to rise with the challenges. So it's about it's about improving yourself, better yourself every year, and don't just be comfortable with where you are, and 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 that's the difference, you know. So when you have a bit of success, you can't lie on your models because you were successful last season, and now you want to be exactly the same as you were the new season because teams will analyze you and they say, okay, this was the this was the strength of that team. This this season we prepare and that. So now your team has to take it a notch up because what they prepare for, what you did last season, now you've got something new in store for them. But if you don't, if you're not up for that challenge, then of course you're going to have difficulties and, 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 and that's how it is, you know? And, and for me, it's just a fact that when players, when South African players, because I'm going to say it because it's a South African thing, when you have, when you're successful, you've arrived and you don't need to be successful anymore. That's it. And that's why you see, name me one player who has success two, three years in a row. One player. I'm going to give you an example. Not that, not that I'm pinpointing and I'm saying anything about this. I'm just saying, a few years ago, Spilela and Glover, player of the season for Maritzburg United. Am I right? 
Where was the consistency then? For me, fantastic player deserved it, but they, I can I can give you one player that I can say, okay, there's an example, but why must there be an example of one player? Why can't I say that one, that one, that one, that one, that one? Because you go to Europe, Kylian Mbappe. Oh, since 19 years old, he's been doing it. We're still talking about him and he's going to be replacing Messi and Ronaldo. Messi and Ronaldo, they do it for 15, 15 years consecutive, nonstop, because they know you have to improve here. And if you want to be the best, if you want to be at the highest level, you got to, you got to take it a notch up. You can't just be in third year and expect you've done, hey, I, I finished third or second. In third year, I can stay in third year. Good luck, someone else is going to come. He's going to go to fifth year and he leave you still behind in third year. And that's how it is. You know, Tembazwani, one of the most consistent players for me in the league. That's a player I can tell you, season after season after season, the same performance, you know, the same performance, and he goes higher and higher. But how many other players can I name that, that I can say has been consistent? And that's a, a South African... South African thing, it's a South African mentality that uh, if I have three, four good games, I've arrived and now I don't need to, I don't need to want to achieve anymore, you know? And that's what I want to change. I want to make a difference. I want players to understand life is not just about being successful for one year and then you disappear off the face of the earth after that, but they remember you for that year. You know, you, you must be remembered for Year after year after year, because, you know, that's who you are. That's you want success all the time. If you taste success, success breeds success. If you want, if you taste it, then you enjoy it. Then you want to stay there, you know? So whether I'm becoming demanding, I don't think I'm demanding. I just want that the players give themselves a little bit. If you give, if you give 60% next season, give 70%. It's not that hard. You know, so when there's when no when there's no when you don't succeed after that, then you know, it's always the coach's fault. Which I, think I accept, you know, but I'm never gonna change how I am. I think they have to, they have to, they have to switch very, very quickly and very soon as well, because the PSL is your bread and butter. You know, that's where you compete for a whole season and you want to be, you want to do the best that you possibly can. You want to finish in a respectable position, a respectable place. So we have to switch it on straight away. You know, we can't dwell on, we can't dwell on the fact that, um, you know, that you didn't maybe have success in one game in the Champions League. Now everything is lost. Nothing is lost. You know, we still got plenty to achieve. We still got seven games where we can do exceptionally well in, you know, and then people say, hey, I'm a Zulu. Sure. Quality, because it's just all in the mindset. I tried, my man. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> Good luck to me. <laughs>